In this lecture, we are going to build a Solidity contract for an NFT. You could build this initially on Remix, the online Solidity editor, and compile it to test it out, or you can build it directly immediately in your project if you know that the contract is pre-tested. Inside of our contracts folder, let's create a new file. We will call this my nft.solidity. Here, first, we are going to specify the license, SPDX license identifier, and let's use MIT license. Then we'll specify our Solidity version, such as 0 0.8.0. And you have to make sure that your Solidity version matches up with your Solidity compiler. So in this case, we have 0 0.8.10, so that is the one we can use. If you want to use a different version of Solidity, make sure that you put that here and make sure that your Solidity compiler matches up with that. And also note that sometimes the language changes can have breaking changes, so be careful about what version you're using because the language can change and then you have to change a lot of your code if you want to upgrade, for example, from Solidity 0.1 to Solidity 0.9. Then here I am going to import our first standard from open Zeppelin slash contracts slash token slash ERC721. Extensions of ERC721 URI storage dot solidity. So this is the template we are going to use for our contract. ERC721 is a standard for building an NFT. It's like a template or a blueprint. There are other blueprints for NFTs, but this is the most widely recognized one currently. Now for this to work, we do have to install Open Zeppelin contracts. So inside of your terminal, go to your project folder and run npm install at open zeppelin slash contracts. That way you can actually use this library. And here, just give this a moment to update and we will have Open Zeppelin working. Open Zeppelin will also be added to your node modules. Let me just close this and reopen it. Okay, now it works. All right, so we have imported ERC721 URI storage, which means that our contract, my NFT, can inherit from ERC721 URI storage. Now make sure that the name of your contract matches the name of your file in order to keep consistent and to avoid problems later down. As well as being ERC721 URI storage, I'm also going to make this ownable so someone can own the contract. I'm going to import from open Zeppelin slash contract slash access the ownable dot solidity file. And you can actually see all of these files just by going into the node modules folder and then going into this exact location. Now currently we have an error because we haven't implemented all the requirements for this contract. One more requirement we need before we start building out the body of the contract is going to be from Open Zeppelin contracts and utils and I need to add the counters.solidity as well. Inside of the contract we are going to be using counters for counters.counter and we're going to define a private field token IDs so that way we can keep track of the IDs for our tokens. Then we're going to set the contract name and the contract symbol. So I'm going to have a constructor ERC721 with my name. We can call this my NFT contract. And then we can have our symbol like my NFT contract. And we need the body of the constructor. So here we've just set up the constructor for the ERC721 parent of this contract. Next, we need several functions. Firstly, to get the current supply of tokens. So I'll make a function called total supply, which is public view, and it will return a uint 256. In here, I'm going to return my token IDs dot current, the latest 
token ID because that will also be the total supply because we're going to be counting or increasing the count every time we add a new token and the token ID will be the count, whatever the current count is. In order to connect to OpenSea, we're also going to build a function called contract URI, which we are going to pass in a string. And in here, we're going to return our JSON data to the contract. So JSON link to contract, and we'll add that in later. We can just leave it like this for now. Because in order to get this JSON data, we have to generate the JSON data, and we'll be doing that shortly. One more function we need is to mint an item. This will take in an address of a minter and a string called the token URI. And this is going to be public and only the owner can perform this. Only the owner can mint and it is going to return a uint256. Feel free to put a space here if you want to see them all on two lines. In order to mint an item, we need to get our token IDs and increment them. So that's why we had to implement the counter. So that way we can increment the token IDs and get the next count. I'm going to declare a uint256 new item ID. This will be our token IDs.current. So the current count. Then I'm going to call mint and this comes from our parent contract and we're going to pass in the minter and the new item ID. Then we're going to set the token URI again from the parent to the new item ID and the token URI that is passed in as a parameter and we'll return the new item ID. All right, and that is the setup for our Solidity smart contract for our NFT. So we built out a very basic NFT in this example. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.